Diabetes mellitus Diabetes mellitus is a group of metabolic diseases characterized by high blood glucose levels, hypoglycemia. This results from defects in insulin secretion, action, or both. Normally, blood glucose levels are tightly controlled by insulin, a hormone produced by the beta cells in the pancreas. In patients with diabetes mellitus, the absence or insufficient production of insulin causes hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia leads to spillage of glucose into the urine, hence the term diabetes sweet urine. Normally, blood glucose levels are tightly controlled by insulin, a hormone produced by the beta cells in the pancreas. Whenever there is an elevation of blood glucose insulin is released from the pancreas to normalize the glucose level. In patients with diabetes mellitus, the absence or insufficient production of insulin causes hyperglycemia. Regulation blood glucose Glucose is the key regulator of insulin secretion by the pancreatic beta cells. When there is an elevation of blood glucose insulin is released from the pancreas to normalize the glucose level. When blood glucose level is decreased glucagon is released from pancreas to increase glucose level. Insulin and carbohydrates Influences glucose metabolism in most tissues Liver Inhibits glycogenolysis Inhibits gluconeogenesis Stimulates glycogen synthesis Increases glucose utilization glycolysis Muscles Increase glucose uptake by muscles Stimulates glycogen synthesis and glycolysis Adipose tissue. Glycerol is formed that is terrifies with fatty acids to form triglycerides. Role of glucagon. Glucagon helps maintain the level of glucose in the blood. Liver cells, hepatocytes, have glucagon receptors. When glucagon binds to the glucagon receptors, the liver cells convert the glycogen polymer into individual glucose molecules and release them into the bloodstream in a process known as glycogenolysis. As these stores become depleted, glucagon then encourages the liver to synthesize additional glucose by gluconeogenesis. Glucagon also regulates the rate of glucose production through lipolysis. Classification Most cases of diabetes mellitus fall into three broad categories. Type 1 Type 2 Gestational diabetes Type 1 diabetes Type 1 diabetes mellitus is characterized by loss of the insulin-producing beta cells of the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas leading to insulin deficiency. Most affected people are otherwise healthy and of a healthy weight when onset occurs. Sensitivity and responsiveness to insulin are usually normal, especially in the early stages. Type 1 diabetes can affect children or adults but was traditionally termed juvenile diabetes because it represents a majority of the diabetes cases in children. Type 1 diabetes This type of diabetes can be further classified as immune-mediated or idiopathic. The majority of type 1 diabetes is of the immune-mediated nature, where beta cell loss is a T-cell mediated autoimmune attack. Type 2 diabetes Type 2 diabetes mellitus is characterized by insulin resistance which may be combined with relatively reduced insulin secretion. The defective responsiveness of body tissues to insulin is believed to involve the insulin receptor. In the early stage of type 2 diabetes, the predominant abnormality is reduced insulin sensitivity. At this stage hyperglycemia can be reversed by a variety of measures and medications that improve insulin sensitivity or reduce glucose production by the liver. Type 2 diabetes is due primarily to lifestyle factors and genetics. Gestational diabetes Gestational diabetes mellitus, GDM, resembles type 2 diabetes in several respects, involving a combination of relatively inadequate insulin secretion and responsiveness. It occurs in about 2% to 5% of all pregnancies and may improve or disappear after delivery. Gestational diabetes is fully treatable but requires careful medical supervision throughout the pregnancy. About 20% to 50% of affected women develop type 2 diabetes later in life. 
gestational diabetes. Even though it may be transient, untreated gestational diabetes can damage the health of the fetus or mother. Risks to the baby include macrosomia, high birth weight, congenital cardiac and central nervous system anomalies, skeletal muscle malformations, other types. Pre-diabetes indicates a condition that occurs when a person's blood glucose levels are higher than normal but not high enough for a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. Genetic mutations, autosomal or mitochondrial, can lead to defects in beta cell function. Any disease that causes extensive damage to the pancreas may lead to diabetes, for example, chronic pancreatitis. Many drugs impair insulin secretion and some toxins damage pancreatic beta cells. Signs and Symptoms The early symptoms of untreated diabetes mellitus are related to elevated blood sugar levels and loss of glucose in the urine, glycosuria. High amounts of glucose in the urine can cause increased urine output and lead to dehydration. Increased thirst and water consumption Signs and Symptoms the inability to utilize glucose energy eventually leads to weight loss despite an increase in appetite. Patients with diabetes are prone to developing infections of the bladder, skin, and vaginal areas. Fluctuations in blood glucose levels can lead to blurred vision. Extremely elevated glucose levels can lead to lethargy and coma, diabetic coma. Signs and symptoms Common symptoms Polyuria, frequent urination. Polydipsia, excessive thirst. Polyphagia, extreme hunger. Unexplained weight loss. Increased fatigue. Irritability. Blurry vision. Frequent infections. Dry, itchy skin. Numbness or tingling in hands or feet. Red, swollen or tender gums. Consequences of hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia. Random blood glucose concentration more than 200 mg dl results when insulin deficiency leads to uninhibited gluconeogenesis and prevents the use and storage of circulating glucose. The kidneys cannot reabsorb the excess glucose load, causing glycosuria, osmotic diuresis, thirst, and dehydration. Increased fat and protein breakdown leads to ketone production and weight loss. Without insulin, a type 1 diabetic wastes away and eventually dies from diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA. Diagnosis The fasting blood glucose test is the preferred way to diagnose diabetes. After the person has fasted overnight, at least 8 hours, a single sample of blood is drawn and analyzed. Normal fasting plasma glucose levels are less than 110 mg dl. Fasting plasma glucose levels of more than 126 mg dl on two or more tests on different days indicate diabetes. If the overnight fasting blood glucose is greater than 126 mg dl on two different tests on different days, the diagnosis of diabetes mellitus is made. When fasting a blood glucose stays above 110 mg dl, but in the range of 110 to 126 mg/dl this is known as impaired fasting glucose ifg